Okay, let me switch this on. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, and thank you guys for coming. Um, it seems you maybe have plans for holidays too. Uh, so let's see whether we can save that. Uh, so my name is uh, Tobias. I'm an OWASP member and I also happen to be uh, the chair of our board. Um, what I'd like today to talk about, no, oh, first disclaimer. Okay, uh, you probably know this from television. All characters appearing in this work are fictitious, okay? Uh, any resemblance to real persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Uh, the views and opinions expressed in this article are those just of, uh, are just mine, okay? And everything I say is my own personal opinion, especially the wrong ones. So uh, we can have a discussion. Don't believe me if you don't want to. Um, my background is I've been in, in InfoSec for a couple of years now. Um, I did a lot of stuff in managing application security. So this is a little bit from the, from the things, let's say, I've seen on the road. Um, and at some point I thought, hey, actually, maybe you should write about it or you should give a little talk about this, how, how things are going, how, how you interact in, in such a situation. So as I said, this is purely fictitious. Okay, this, is, uh, this has never really happened before and if you feel like this might uh, sound familiar to your organization, this is totally just uh, coincidental. So uh, the beginning is, um, imagine you are the chief information security officer of a medium-sized organization and you think you have this, like a really strong fortress, everything is going well. You are well fortified, you have secured your perimeter, you have antivirus, you have firewalls, you have secure off-the-shelf software systems customized for, customized for your business needs, um, a few built-in system applications, so stuff you build yourself, and very little budget because you are doing fine and you never had a breach. I'm not sure, does that sound familiar with anyone here? See, so, no way, no way, yes, of course. No, no, no. Until today. So this would be, this would be what you think maybe is the truth, and now the truth. In truth, you have this. So a breach happened. Suddenly you realize, oh my gosh, okay, the whole perimeter, yes, that was a nice fantasy. We have this nice firewall that protects us against everything. But then there are these crazy people called hackers, uh, who take uh, SQL injection and they just pass right through it and take down, uh, download our whole database or something like this. I'm actually not going into the detail about uh, how a breach happens, but what I want to talk about is what happens after that and what you, what you make out of it or what you don't make out of it. So, I'm not sure whether you know the anonymous uh, CISO community. So this would be, uh, hello, my name is John Smith. I am the CISO of a medium-sized company and we had a breach. The answer would be, hello, John. Thank you for sharing. Um, so you had your breach, what happens next? First of all, your executive management might get crazy, might get, might get a little bit upset what happened? Why do we have this problem? Why do we have to talk with the media? Why is the press calling me suddenly? Why do we have this security problem? I thought we hired you to solve all this. Um, you may feel a little panic coming up. So you may feel like, oh, okay, should I start running or better hide somewhere in the corner of your office? Or what should we do with this? And you may feel a little broken. Um, so your executive management team is, is getting upset. Your customers are worried. They suddenly ca start calling you. I mean, suddenly you receive calls from people. I mean, normally the security office is a pretty quiet job, actually, I find. Uh, your employees are confused. They don't really know what's going on. You don't have a me your company didn't have a message before because you never had a breach. And suddenly your CEO knows you by name and has you on speed dial. I mean, you may not have talked with this guy for a long time, but suddenly he knows you very well and you kind of daily updates, weekly updates, what's going on. It's, I mean, it's nice to be so popular. Maybe, maybe not. Um, 
so you get the pleasure of these uh, of a lot of communication and well I wrote this a little bit from a, a personal perspective uh, summer holiday now is May so imagine this happened yesterday or like last week I like to go on holiday I don't know about you um, so maybe you have plans for July there's a nice beach somewhere waiting for you maybe you want to drink some cocktails but if you come now to your you just had your breach you talk to your CEO you say oh I want to go on holiday all bets are off sorry guys first you have to fix it and to fix it you have to do this do we have a security strategy can you update it uh, our security policy update SDLC do we even have one and if we have one kind of what do we have to improve how do we benchmark against others that's something people often like to ask do you do we have risk management you see you read about risk management you know when when you kind of uh, when you hit the, the media your CEO said oh well some journalists said oh they they should apply risk management oh okay what's what's this what, what do we have to do for that um, do we have a security team maybe it's just you but your CEO suddenly feels like kind of generous and wants to hire a couple of people just to make the thing go away so maybe that's something you want to look at uh, security training oh yeah yeah we have this end user awareness training somewhere sometimes I think five years ago some people took it yeah so you may need to update the whole training you need to roll out a training program secure coding guidelines for the people who write this stuff in your company so just from like the top of your head after the breach this would be things you would be looking at doing and like kind of by yesterday I mean you don't really want to have these intensive conversations every few days at some point you need to show a certain movement in motion so hmm this is a long list I'm not sure about you but how long would you think this will take Years. yes yeah yes is a good bet yeah yeah that would be my first feeling too so there goes your holiday okay I mean you can go in ho on holiday in two years time maybe if you do all this um, I mean the people who know me uh, know I have a tendency to be a little bit lazy and I don't like long solutions so much I rather prefer something that works fast if I can so I thought okay what's what's kind of how can we make this shorter or how can we make this easier less painful so the good thing is you are not alone there's a lot of people out there who have the same problem maybe they didn't get a breach last week but maybe they got a CEO who reads the newspaper about your company having a breach and who's now nervous too and suddenly all the people want to improve their security so the question is how do you get all this stuff make it yourself make everything yourself years years is, is I think a quite accurate estimate uh, no chance to get there in time for your holiday not even close so one of the things you could think about is uh, well learn and copy from the experts there's this crazy organization of, of a group of experts uh, and everything they do is kind of open source and free I'm not sure whether you heard of them uh, maybe should we take a look so um, this is kind of the list I mean let's take one let's uh, take one tooth out right from the beginning yesterday is impossible okay I mean that's yeah uh, next month highly highly unlikely within three months you can get some stuff actually you will see it depends on what your expectations are so you can get a lot of quick wins in a short time and then you can get on holiday come back uh, and do the, finish the work afterwards that that would be an approach you can take so how can OWASP help you uh, we have materials and tools online uh, if you've been here this morning in the opening we have over 40,000 people around the world who can actually uh, who you could ask you can really talk with us I mean it's like we are crazy people but we are also nice people so we are happy to help and there's a lot of ideas in OWASP 
one of the problems is, well, let's go to the next page. Yeah, it's like we have a lot of projects. And it's totally confusing and you don't really know which one you want to use, which one is good for your problem. I mean, we have a list of 10 topics you need to solve now. You don't have time to spend like three weeks just scrubbing through the website and thinking about what you could use. So yeah, okay, you see this is kind of the projects are dropping in. We have over 140. So I'm, I'm gonna stop this at some point because otherwise this will take whole day. Of course, it's not only about OWASP. I mean, you don't need to copy only from us. Uh, there's other places as well where you can draw inspiration. Uh, ISO 27000 series. Um, there's some risk management stuff, NIST, uh, CSA, and so on. And I'm a fan of copy. You know, if you see something good, I don't care where it's coming from. I take it. I, I mean, if it's allowed. <laughs> if they release it as open source or with an open license. Uh, this is a little bit how you would frame this to your boss, to your CEO. So often CEOs come with, okay, this people, process, and technology framework. Okay, how does this fit in your comprehensive solution? So you would think about, okay, training is for your people. Organization, we hire some people. Uh, how, how do we set up our team? Process, risk management. What was this again? Yeah. Uh, SDLC, Sudden, yeah, maybe you, you need one. Yeah. Guidelines, verification, and then you want to have some tools. So this is how you can frame this to your, to your boss. Kind of easy. So this is a list of things that I found useful when con being confronted with such a situation. You get your CEO who's kind of uh, nervous or you get a, your chief information security officer who wants progress now or well, maybe he wants progress next year, but you could actually deliver progress now. And the good thing is all of this is free. So you just have to read it. So this is like a basic roadmap about stuff that you can do. I'm speeding a little bit because this is a hectic situ situation. So you, you are sitting in your office and you have to think about what you do next by actually end of the day because you have to reply again to your CEO who's asking, what did you do today? So the first one is uh, maybe you want to know where you are. How bad are things in your company? Um, how do we benchmark? Uh, what did go wrong? Uh, so for this, uh, maturity model is good. You, have a, you can spend a lot of time reviewing existing models. Uh, there's like plenty of models out there, a lot of opportunity to choose from. You can actually spend like weeks just assessing the models that are out there and choosing which one you, you, know, you want to go with. Uh, like CMM. I mean, here's like two things that I kind of just put there as an example. Like BSIM, I think is a very sophisticated, very detailed, it's quite nice. And OpenSAM, which we have here at OWASP. And actually, there was a great uh, workshop yesterday. And there's also a team uh, right here at OWASP at the moment at the conference. So the challenge is hmm, BSIM, hundreds of pages. It's unlikely you're going to make it to your holiday. Very unlikely if you go with this. I think the one year time frame is not unrealistic. OpenSAM, not so detailed, um, not so sophisticated, but uh, you can actually get your first assessment within a day. So you can read the stuff in a day and then uh, make your first assessment. So you get the first results very, very, very fast. So maybe if you want to go on holiday, this might be an easier choice. Just a quick one. So you see OpenSAM is quite easy. Uh, we have 12 domains, governance, construction. Construction is how you build the software. Verification is how you test it. Deployment is how you yeah, deploy it. Pretty simple. And you basically just assess on, on, three, dimension, uh, on three elements of each dimension with a few simple questions. And you either say yes, no, and then you get a ranking one, two, uh, zero, one, two, three. So very easy. So, okay, Chuck, you got your first uh, maturity model, self-assessment, benchmarking. First few days done. Next, awareness training. Obviously you have a choice, build, buy, or just use something. 
If you have a lot of money, of course, buying is nice because you don't have to do the work. <laughs> if you don't have so much money yet, uh, or maybe you have a long purchasing process, maybe you just want to start with something you can get for free. And it happens to be there is a lot of stuff from OWASP about awareness. First of all, as you all know, um, OWASP top 10, super easy. So uh, version 2013, it's roughly you can have a 1.5 hour presentation, like 90 minutes, super easy, out of the box, ready to go. Uh, you also have it in different languages. Maybe you're a global company. Um, there's also something for cloud. It's important to remember it's beyond. There's more than 10. And what may help you if your CEO is asking you, OK, why do you choose this? Actually, external standards are referring to OWASP top 10. So it's a good, good way of explaining why you choose that. Um, it also helps sometimes for managers. They tend to even understand. They tend to understand that too, interestingly. Um, I recommend to tailor it for your organization, which maybe takes a day. So what you would do is you use our OWASP top 10, then you adjust it to your security situation. Like what was your latest breach? Uh, which application types do you use? On which topics do you want to focus? And which examples do you use for, for the presentation? Takes maybe one, two days to adjust. You listen to the presentation once or twice, takes maybe two hours, three hours, and then you go and give it internally. Yes, slide deck is available online. So it's a slide deck, it's a PDF, and it's on our wiki. So we actually have like everything for that. Um, and I, I would say this is probably the most used project from OWASP by far. <laughs> but it goes beyond that. I mean, so you have your first presentation, first awareness training. Uh, then maybe you want to talk, uh, you want to teach your developers a little bit deeper. So we have cheat sheets. Maybe your developer asks, OK, yeah, I heard we should not do the SQL injection thingy. So how do we not do that? <laughs> oh, OK, we have a cheat sheet. Here, read this, and then we talk again. <laughs> because you don't want to go and discuss with every developer how it's not done or how it's better done. So just send them the cheat sheet and talk with them afterwards if they still have questions. The same is true for cross-site scripting and all kind of a whole bunch of problems. So you, you can actually just link these cheat sheets into your, um, you can copy them into your internal web, pay, uh, web uh, site and say, OK, developers, this is how you do stuff. Uh, we have secure coding practices. So at the beginning, I mentioned maybe you want to uh, set some standards for how you write software in your organization. And you can spend actually weeks on writing this. And you can analyze and think, and then you think about the different platforms and, and frameworks that you're going to use. Or you take the short way, and you just use the uh, OWASP uh, Secure Coding Best Practices Quick Reference Guide, a very long name for a super short document, 17 pages. Again, it's like you take this, uh, you go through it, cut out maybe 20 30% you cut out because it's not relevant for you. Uh, put your company label on top, leave the OWASP reference at the bottom, and you have your company secure coding uh, guidelines. Okay? One step closer to your holiday. We're getting there. Um, you may have some security experts you actually want to practice and exercise, so like your champions. For that, we have WebCode, which is like a broken web application. So after people did the OWASP top 10 learning and all this stuff, they can actually practice and without shooting your own applications. Uh, of course, be careful. Do not host web code on a productive server. OK, always disclaimer. Well, you see stuff in the world. Um, yeah, so this is the quick, oh god, this name, we really should have chosen a different name. <laughs> Secure Coding Practices Quick Reference Guide. OK. <coughs> So you can, I, I, you tend, I think you can boil this down to about 10 pages, maybe 12, which is short enough that nobody can decline it, and long enough that everybody can get a rough idea what they should do. And you're done with that. OK, check. By the way, this is from Boeing, uh, very kindly donated to OWASP. So they developed this for themselves. They spent all the effort, so we don't have to. 
Um, yeah, you can use this internally, but you can also use this, for example, if you have suppliers. So if, if, you, if some other guys are working for you and writing software for you, maybe you tell them, oh, we want software to be secure. And they ask, oh, okay, what do you mean with that? Of course our software is secure. Yeah, but then it kind of gets fuzzy. <laughs> Um, but this way you can say, well, you write the software with this guideline, and then we are okay. And if you make a mistake, if you break this, it's your fault. If we didn't mention it, okay, then, well, maybe we have to talk. Uh, the cheat sheet series, as I mentioned before. So we have cheat sheets, meanwhile, for, I, I think, a lot, nearly everything. Uh, the teachers have also been compiled in a book now, so it's quite quite convenient. See, time is good. Actually, I think I'm quite good in time. Uh, okay, so web code, risk management. Oh gosh, yes. Ah, this is what your CEO wants. We want risk management. We want to manage our risks. What can we do? What can we do? So. Maybe before you start with this, one of the key questions is why do you do it? <laughs> I mean, yes, your CEO read about it, so that's a very good reason to do stuff. Um, the second reason might be you want to do this because you want to decide how much you need to invest where. So what do you do and how much? Because you can spend infinite amounts of money on security. Literally infinite. Um, so this is just the basic risk. Actually, this is one of the things where you don't copy necessarily from OWASP, but you better copy from somewhere else. Uh, we do have uh, a risk assessment uh, methodology at OWASP, but it's not the standard one and it's not the best one. Uh, so here for, for risk, just like as a reference point, uh, so we know what we're talking about, definition mostly used in the industry is probable frequency and probable magnitude of future loss. So imagine, simple example, you're playing Russian roulette you have a gun with six chambers, one bullet. What's your probability? One in six, 16%. Uh, what's your magnitude of loss? One life. one life, yes. If it's my life, yeah, no. Yeah, so it's quite, quite bad. Uh, yeah, no holiday, yes, exactly. If, if you have the 16%, uh, no holiday, yes. That, that's no fun, yeah. Um, and also no future holidays. Um, so this is a very basic model. You can talk about many different dimensions of that. Uh, there's a lot of different models out there. As I said, there's the OWASP rating and some others. Most of them are kind of the same. So this is how we at OWASP rate risk. But as I said, this is not what I recommend because this is the rating for the OWASP top 10 uh, more outside industry wide. How you look at this inside your organization is more like ISO 2705. Uh, FAIR is the same model for this. So how do you start? I mean, if you start with, okay, I have to do risk management, well, you just download, for example, ISO 2705. I think you need to pay like $70 for this. Sorry, I think you can afford it. Uh, at least after the hackers took all your money, you should afford it now. Um, so you, you basically you assign, okay, that's a probability, that's the loss, and then you think about what's the vulnerabilities you have, threat frequency, so how often would someone try to hack you? Obviously more often than you thought before. Uh, what's the business impact? Ooh, yeah, okay, whole database going south. And what's the asset value? So it's, it's actually a very easy, simple uh, way of thinking. You just have to uh, apply it. It's quite basic. So uh, when you start this, you think about your assets. This is actually going to take some time. I mean, inventory of assets, uh, this is going to take some time. But you could at least roll out the basic methodology and then go on holiday while they inventory. <laughs> um, what do you get out of risk management? What would your CEO want to see from you? You've probably all seen this, like a basic risk heat map. Green, yellow, red. So if it's red, it's bad. If it's green, it's good. Uh, the, the, the basic correlation is you have likelihood and impact. So if it's very likely, uh, no, if it's very unlikely and very low impact, you basically don't have to spend much money on fixing or you just ignore. But if it's very, very likely up top and very bad impact, then you definitely want to fix. So with this, you look at all the problems you have, and then you assign the risk. 
And that way you prioritize. So yeah, can you do like a fully sophisticated risk management quickly? No. Can you do a basic risk management quickly? Actually, yes. I mean, the ISO 2705 is not a long document. And if you kind of skip through all the blah, blah, it boils down very quickly to just this. And you can, you can probably get a risk management, a uh, basic risk management up and running within a couple of days as well. Okay. So, okay. So we have policy, we have strategy, we have risk management, we have training. Uh, what next? Oh, SDLC. Ooh. 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 Okay. That's, that's a hard one because probably your organization didn't have one before. Or maybe you had one, but maybe it was kind of easy. So, well, you can read up. Okay. OWASP doesn't have well, we do have some SDLC projects, but not a good one. If you want inspiration, I would say a very comprehensive list is from Microsoft. And it's public, okay? They, they give this away for free. You can, you can read this yourself, no problem. Uh, and if you don't like Microsoft, Adobe did a very good job too. So um, you can take it from, from them as well. In the end, the content is quite similar. It looks different on the graphics, but what they do is quite similar. However, there is a challenge. You remember you wanted to go on holiday. Introducing such a comprehensive SDL is a long, long feat. So if you want to get ready on holiday, you cannot do everything. And actually, if you are in any, uh, in any good state of mind, you wouldn't try everything right from the beginning. What you do is you just cherry pick some stuff. This is like reading in the menu of a restaurant. You don't buy every food right at the beginning. I mean, you go there the first day you eat something, you go second day eat something else. So here again, you just pick some stuff that you think makes most sense for your organization. Maybe you introduce some training, uh, you have some security requirements, ignore the other stuff. Maybe you do some design requirements. Maybe you introduce some static analysis if you want to. Incident response, you definitely should because you just had one and you run your incident response. So you just pick a couple of things. That's, that's stuff that sounds good to you at this point. Don't go with everything. I mean, it took Microsoft more than a couple of years to do that. So I'm not claiming you can do this in a, in a couple of months. But actually, you can ramp up your, your SDLC at least in process also quickly. If you, if you minimize the steps you want to take. So you can get a quick win. Okay, so SDLT as well, check. Uh, next one, security strategy. That's often a, a point like people ask me, okay, what's actually in a security strategy? What is that? And I actually also kind of, I mean, I have an idea what's in it. And I've written a couple of them but the interpretation is quite different depending on the company. However, if you're not sure what should be in it, we have a nice pro we also have a nice project for that, um, which is the OWASP CISO guide, Application Security Guide for CISOs. So there's actually a chapter in it, uh, how to write your security strategy. Uh, the chapter is like three pages, so it's kind of high level, but also like a template. So it's like, what should be in it and how would you get it? Like, what's your input and what's your output? So with that, I think you can write a basic security strategy, like maybe five, five pages quite quickly, maybe 10. I know some organizations believe in that a good strategy needs to have like 150 pages so nobody reads it. Uh, I don't really subscribe to that. I think a good strategy is something that's concise, clear, and people will read it because it's not overwhelming. So actually, short is good in some ways. Unless you don't want your management to read your strategy. That's a different story. Um, okay, strategy. Um, I, I, I would say I have experience like writing a strategy based on this template uh, within, within a week. So, yeah. I think that would be a fair target. Uh, looking for some intelligence. I mean, your, your CEO will probably ask you, okay, okay, why are we doing this? And why are we not doing this? And what's, why is this important? And can you give, give me some data? 
we need to make decisions based on data and not just on gut feeling, at least uh, not based on the CEO's gut feeling. So uh, let's, let's get some data. When do we get some data? Okay, we can buy some Gartner and uh, other reports. These are usually also 150 pages or more, but quite expensive. So you get a lot of paper for a lot of money. Um, Yes, do that. Uh, if you have the budget, go ahead. If you don't have the budget, OWASP has something for that too. Uh, we have the uh, CISO survey, and you can get, we asked like over 100 CISOs, uh, like what they think is the trends and what's going on. So for example, you can report to your CEO, oh, okay, we see external attacks are on the rise. So we actually have to focus on that more. Uh, the insider threat is kind of a little bit overrated, at least in the view of a uh, number of CISOs now. Um, what else? Yeah, or you can say, uh, what are the main areas of risk for organizations? Infrastructure, application, so there's a certain tent, uh, trend to go there. Um, compared to 12 months ago, in which areas do you see change? For example, they see, okay, applications seem to be more a risk nowadays than, than before. Uh, I mean, we all have a firewall now, so... Uh, what are the top five sources of, of risk within your organization? Lack of awareness, uh, inadequate testing, lack of budget, staffing. So very basic things, but you can basically show, okay, this is, this is some industry data that you can use to justify your, your next moves. So you have your strategy, and now you also get the data uh, to, under, uh, to put a foundation under your strategy, to make a good argument, make a good case. Uh, yeah, aspects of annual investment. So is it increasing, decreasing? That's also helpful. Sometimes, sometimes CEOs ask, why do we have to increase our budget? Do others increase their budget or can we just say? Then you can say, oh, okay, actually nearly half of the people are increasing their budget. Uh, top priorities. Spending after security incidents, oh, we just had one, so yeah, it's maybe useful to think about what others did after they had one. Actually, I found this one kind of funny because bef if you look at the statistics, if you look at the first one, it's like the question, okay, are you spending more after an incident? Actually, only 30% thought so of, of the general population. But if you boil down and ask, only look at the people who had one, who actually experienced an incident, suddenly it's over, over half who know they spent more. So yes, you may live in dream fantasy land and think, oh no, we're not going to spend more. It's all going to be fine. We're going to fix it. But when you actually encounter this situation, you, you see more people, oh, okay, yeah, we maybe didn't do enough before. Okay. This is maybe also useful because your, your CEO may say, okay, why did we get into this situation? So what are the, f what are the challenges? Uh, obviously, it's like skilled resources, budget, but maybe also for your CEO to talk about, hey, actually, do we have enough management awareness? I mean, yes, now I have your attention, <laughs> but maybe we should have talked about this earlier. Okay, so you have your maturity model. You have training materials. You introduce some basic risk management. You have an SDLC. We didn't really do much organizational design. You have a lot of training stuff. If you want to go into more depth, this is going to take more time. So this is not going to be done before your holiday, this last bit. So you can have developer training, more deeper materials, and so on, and testing. So how, how are we doing now? So this was the list from the beginning. You remember? So, strategy, template, written. Upgrade your security policy. Uh, you use the CISO guide and you use the coding guide. SDLC, take a look at Microsoft, pick some cherries and go with it. Benchmark, open SAM, take a look at the CISO survey, what you want to do. Risk management, Five days, ISO 2705. Uh, security training and awareness. OWASP has loads of stuff for that. Uh, secure coding guidelines. Uh, OWASP secure coding quick reference guide. Sorry, this name is really gonna. Okay, uh, security team and organizing. 
well, we have to leave some work items for you, okay? I mean, we can't do everything for you. So one item we left for you to do, okay? So that, that one is kind of something you have to negotiate. All within three months, yeah, I think you can be the judge of it. Some you can do, may, maybe I'm a little bit aggressive. Uh, I tend to be aggressive, yes, I acknowledge. But I challenge you, I think you can do more than you think if you really need to go and fast. And OWASP can be the source for you to do that. It's, I showed you, I mean, there's a lot of stuff there. You just have to know where and pick the right stuff. So, coming back, will your holiday be safe? That's something you will have to think about when you spend the next uh, days here at OWASP. You look at the different uh, tracks. You hear to the different uh, CISOs talking. Uh, I hope, you know, I often feel like this in, a, in an organization. It's like you work for security and you sometimes feel like people don't really understand what you want or they don't appreciate the problem. Um, but maybe it can also help you feel like this, yeah? So with all this stuff, I hope this was kind of helpful. Um, Think about what OWASP tools do you think would be useful. Actually, if you think you want something, let us know. Or if you think you have something that would be good for others, please uh, donate it to us. OWASP is an open platform, so you can actually share uh, knowledge here. Uh, what would you like to have in the future? We can make new projects happen. This is the platform to do it. We just need to have your input. So if you want some other things, tell us. And uh, I think one question you have to think about is what kind of cocktail do you want to drink on the beach? With that, thank you very much for your time and I hope it was good. We also, sorry, one last word. I, I promised this to um, Colin. We have the OWASP App Sensor CISO briefing, uh, which is a, again, short and concise document from OWASP. You can actually, we have a whole bunch there in the back. So you can have one for free today, or you can uh, buy one later for money. So that's up to you. Or you can, of course, download it online uh, also for free, because everything we do is free. OK, thank you very much, and sorry. Thank you.